When a volcanic eruption occurs, a common question that members of the public often ask is, could this eruption trigger activity or an eruption at a second volcano? For example, this question might ask if during a future hypothetical eruption of the Three Sisters volcano in Oregon, could it also trigger an eruption at the Belknap Crater Shield volcano only 12 miles to the north of the complex? Traditionally, the answer to this question has almost always been a firm no. Yet, in recent years, evidence has emerged of select groups of volcanoes which seemingly break this rule. For example, on the Rakhines Peninsula of Iceland, volcanoes appear to erupt in rapid succession after several hundred years of no or few eruptions. This is why since 2019 the peninsula has been the site of five failed magmatic intrusions which never reached the surface, and two which did, producing effusive volcanic eruptions. Although the next example does not tend to cause both volcanoes to erupt at the same time, eruptions at Kilauea seem to affect the Mauna Loa volcano and vice versa. For example, it seemed a bit strange when both Mauna Loa and Kilauea on December 13th both had their alert levels lowered on the same day, indicating the definitive end of each volcano's eruptions. Or, more interestingly, at times one volcano appears to be dormant, preventing eruptions at their neighbor from occurring. And this is despite each volcano being one of the most active on the planet. For example, between 1934 and 1951, only Mauna Loa was active while Kilauea strangely remained quiet. This trend was reversed between 1952 and 1974 when only Kilauea was active. And from 1985 to 2021, only Kilauea was active. During this time span, one of Kilauea's longest eruptions in recorded history was ongoing, which just happened to coincide with Mauna Loa's longest period with no eruptions since 1843. And, once again, when Kilauea ended its lawn eruption in 2018, Mauna Loa would subsequently go on to erupt a mere four years later. One reason for this apparent pattern where one volcano can affect another is stress effects. Per a direct quote from the U.S. Geological Survey Volcanoes Twitter feed, for stress effects, think of two kids in the backseat of a car. They don't share the same set of veins or nerves, but they can still influence one another. One pushes the other into a corner. Or, one curls up to fall asleep, allowing the other child more room to expand. Although this is an analogy, it describes the way in which Mauna Loa can affect Kilauea and vice versa. If Kilauea is being uplifted and erupting a large volume of magma, additional stress might be placed on Mauna Loa's magma chamber, potentially causing the force required for magma to break overlying rock to increase. However, if Mauna Loa instead deflates due to a lack of eruptions, the energy required for a magma to fracture the overlying rock at the Kilauea volcano might decrease, allowing eruptions to occur there more frequently. And, for clarification, these are two separate volcanoes which do not share a joint magma chamber. And this is despite the fact that eruptions at both volcanoes are supplied magma by the same mantle hotspot, the Hawaiian hotspot. The relation between the two is due to the fact that the Kilauea volcano directly sits on the southeastern flank of the Mauna Loa volcano, so like a pet animal on a person's legs, they both affect the movement of one another. As a final note, it is unclear which volcano will erupt next, but there is a possibility that we might be entering a period where Mauna Loa is once again the dominant volcano on the island. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.